Let's dive right in. Hi, I'm Mungri at Frank and I'll be taking you to Auto Tractor. So, today we shall take a look at the power takeoffs. Let us begin by understanding what power takeoffs are. So, power takeoffs are attachments to the power train, which is the running engine, for conveying the power to the attached implement or machine. So, every implement or machine or attachment that depends on the engine, like the tractor engine, to run, it needs a means by which power is conveyed from the engine to the implement so this means now in this case is the pto it's the one now which transfers power from the engine to the implement so that work is done ptos are commonly known as the spline drive shaft these allow fitting of implements so that they are powered directly by the engine now in this particular tractor this box is what we call the pto drive box where it is a point where the pto is attached this is uh, like a shaft which goes to the engine let's look at how it looks like what's in the box so in this photo we can see this is the drive shaft from the engine so now we have a pto which is to be attached onto this shaft which is coming from the engine so that the power is conveyed now in this case we have this pto uh, this shaft is the male shaft which is this one so we have to mate it with the female shaft which is coming from the pto or from the implement side this is the one from the tractor engine side which is this so we have to mate it with the implement side which is this so when you met the two that is when now they start running synchronously so that the power is transferred from the shaft which is coming from the engine to the implement we have types of ptos it is classified into three types the first one is the transmission driven pto a transmission driven pto connects directly to the tractor transmission it can only transfer power to the attached implement when the engine clutch is engaged on disengaging the clutch the pto stops running so we have both the pto and the tire connected to the same transmission which is the gearbox so when the tractor is moving and the gear is engaged, the PTO will also automatically start moving. Then uh, the second type is the continuous running PTO. Uh, this one contains two clutches and two drive shafts in the same system. One for the transmission system and the other for the PTO. This is also known as the two-stage clutch system. The PTO can continue running while the transmission is disengaged when the clutch is pushed halfway. So we have one clutch for the PTO, then another clutch which is for the transmission for the movement of the tractor. So this two-stage clutch system works in a means such that when the clutch is engaged halfway, the first step is for the transmission, the gearbox of the tractor to control its movement. So when you engage the clutch halfway, then you're changing gears for the tractor to move while the PTO continues to run. Then when you engage the clutch all the way down, the PTO also will disengage and it will stop moving. So we have two stages. The first stage is for the tractor movement, which is the gearbox. Then the second stage of the clutch engagement is for the PTO. Then we have the third PTO type, which is the independent type. This type has its own clutch control, independent of the engine clutch and transmission. Once the PTO is engaged, it runs at engine speed. The system allows full control over the tractor while separately controlling the PTO. So you have a different clutch, an independent clutch from the engine clutch which means that you can control the tractor movement independently while the PTO is not engaged or if you engage the PTO then it will start moving when you engage its clutch so it means that you can control the PTO differently and you can also control the tractor movement differently there are two separate systems 
so it's not like in the continuous system whereby you're using the same clutch to differentiate between the two systems so independent uh, PTOs are further divided into two types we have the mechanical independent PTO this uses a separate on off selector in addition to the PTO control lever often the tractor must be stopped or turned off to change this selector position then we have the hydraulic independent PTO this uses a single selector when in the on position the hydraulic pump produces a hydraulic oil flow and pressure which is directed to the implement via a hydraulic pressure line so we have these two types of independent PTOs in the hydraulic whether you're moving or stationary you can engage it and disengage it so it, it doesn't require you to stop like in the mechanical PTO whereby you have to first stop and you shut down the engine then you engage the PTO or disengage it in modern tractors they use mostly the hydraulic independent PTO because it's ergonomic you don't have to always stop every time you want to engage and disengage so we have uh, the hydraulic independent PTO is widely used in the current situation though we have machines also using the mechanical independent PTO though they are rare and they they are used in machines which don't require so much flexibility and all that we shall look at more of these two types in the coming lectures we head down so the operation of the pto most ptos get power from the transmission system the power received is sent to the equipment through the shaft yeah so as we said earlier the in order to run the implement we have a shaft which is conveying power from the engine to that implement so the shaft which is the pto it, it it connects the engine to the implement to allow power transmission so that the implement can run a pto comprises of two uh, parts which is we have the joint which is the universal joint also it is able to join two rotating shafts in different planes the most used of the universal joint is the hook type which consists of two u-shaped yokes fastened to ends of the two shafts a cross journal links the two yokes to allow movement of the two shafts in different planes so we look at the universal joint this is how it looks like we have these two u-shaped We have the two u shaft shaft shafts we have this is the end of one shaft this this is connected to a shaft and then this is the end to another shaft these are u shaped hook type universal joints uh, we have uh, a journal cross journal in the middle this is how the cross journal looks like we have this end and this end connected to one side of the shaft and then this end and that end connected to the next side of the shaft to allow relative movement of the two shafts in different planes so we say this type of joint is flexible because the pto shaft is able to bend through a convenient angle that is to say from 0 to 30 degrees when you look at the drive shafts vehicles with the rear drive shafts which use the rear tires to to uh, rear drive cars they they have shaft drive shafts now these drive shafts are connected to the differential between the drive shaft coming from the gearbox let's say this is the side coming from the gearbox and then this is the side entering the differential we have this arrangement in between there such that whether there is up and down movement these two shafts can continue working without affecting the power which is brought from the gearbox so we have relative movement in different planes whether they tires move up or down remember the gearbox is stationary 
so whether the tires move up or down this type of arrangement allows gives compensation it compensates for this up and down movement to allow power to continuously be transmitted to the differential so we have two different types of drive shafts uh, drive shafts shafts are components used for transmitting mechanical power and torque and rotation the drive shaft shafts are of two types we have one the solid shaft uh, the solid shaft is a uh, material which is uniformly distributed to form a solid of constant length. If you look at this, the material is it's one complete solid. Say that you have one end connected to maybe the gearbox side, then the other end connected to the to the to the differential. It's one solid shaft of uniform. Uh, distribution of material then the second one we have the telescoping or hollow shaft this type of shaft exhibits flexibility and its length is adjustable thus telescoping shafts have sliding abilities when you look at this its length can be altered in that uh, this cylinder here it's in form of a cylinder it's hollow in the middle yeah it, uh, I think it, it, it works on action of uh, hydraulic fluid. Said so that uh, if we consider this as our input side and this is our output side, it can move, this output side can move inside and out to alter the length of the drive shaft so that we have a relative movement depending on the change in height of the implement of the drive shaft so we shall look more on these both these two types of uh, shafts in the next uh, lectures however in the, the next lecture the lecture three we shall look at tractor standards for pto drives thanks